Hi, welcome to Language in Film, where we take a closer look at how language is used creatively in cinema. I'm sure you're aware of stuttering or stammering. If you have a stutter or you know someone who does, the following may be old news for you. But if you haven't had any personal experience with stuttering, you may not have given much thought to just how severely one can impact a person's quality of life and even their concept of self. As soon as you open your mouth, you become an annoyance, a source of bemusement, or at the worst, the target of open or covert ridicule. It's like, my name is Tim Parks from the Sheriff of Department. Do you know why? Pulled you over this evening, and he looked at me like I was making it weird. So how am I supposed to not giggle and go to prison for the rest of my life? And you really can't blame people without stutters for not knowing what to do in these situations, because they've been trained by our culture and media to believe that stuttering is an outward reflection of some internal deficit, of fear, of weakness, a sign of insecurity and a lack of self-confidence. He's afraid of his own shadow. This myth is reinforced whenever we see a fictional character with a stutter. They will rarely be the hero of a film. Is there a single Marvel or DC superhero with a stutter? Would it be possible for Conan the Barbarian to have a stutter? No, of course not. The very idea is preposterous, isn't it? Because this character represents strength, bravery, and self-reliance. So of course he's not going to stutter. Fictional characters aren't real people after all, and so if they have a stutter in a story, there needs to be a reason why it's there. The writer of this character chose for them to have a stutter because it conveys something about them to the audience. We got caught. I cut out the deal. Even the more sympathetic portrayals of people who stutter still emphasize the inherent ties between the stutter and the character's own fears and insecurities. You know, Billy, what worries me is how your mother is going to take this. A classic example of this is seen in Stephen King's It, where one of the main protagonists, Bill must overcome his stutter in order to conquer the evil presence which feeds on fear. The stutter is a trait of weakness that the character must shed in order to truly grow and accomplish the heroic feats they are meant to. The King's speech, not Stephen King, another King, won four Oscars in 2011 for Best Picture, Director, Actor, and Original Screenplay. And while the film does many things well, it nonetheless perpetuates the myth that stuttering is caused by childhood trauma. Well, that's false. It isn't. What was your earliest memory? I'm not here to discuss personal matters. Well, why are you here then? Because I bloody well stammer! Developmental stuttering has its basis in genetics, with the number one indicator of its development being a family history. No incident or experience can cause persistent stuttering. Likewise, you can't get rid of it simply by believing in yourself, as Tony Robbins might want you to think. Now, having a stutter can cause social anxiety, but that's a result of how stutterers are treated whenever they speak, how our culture negatively responds to stuttering, and how it's erroneously portrayed in nearly every movie I've ever seen. That is, until I stumbled upon the Netflix animated series Blue Eye Samurai. Here at last might be a show on a par with the early seasons of Game of Thrones, an epic that is historical and yet fantastical, full of blood, violence, and misogyny. A wife should be like tofu, unnoticed, colorless, and bland. <laughs> but also containing what William Faulkner called the old universal truths lacking which any story is ephemeral and doomed. Love and honor and pity and pride and compassion and sacrifice. Blue Eye Samurai features a well-crafted plot with multiple interwoven storylines, a cast of richly drawn characters, pun intended, and beautiful art design. It captures minute historical details with remarkable precision. But what impressed me the most about the first season of Blue Eye Samurai was, of all things, its deft handling of the stuttering of one of its characters. Let's take a closer look and see how this portrayal stands apart from the previous examples. Spoilers ahead, by the way, if you haven't already seen the show. So the backstory here is the familiar trope of a princess being married off against her will. In this case, a young noblewoman named Akimi, voiced by actress Brenda Song. 
Akimi seeks to take her fate into her own hands by escaping from her father and eventually employing herself in a brothel. In her first encounter with a male patron, we see her able to satisfy his desires with the extreme sensuality with which she recites her favorite poet. Her words light a fire and fill me with smoke. Shall I recite? This scene foreshadows one where we will eventually see Akimi transform into a woman who seizes control of her destiny. So some stuff happens because she's not even really the main character, and eventually her father's men find her and return her against her will to his house, where he forces her to marry Takayoshi, the younger son of the Shogun. At first, he appears to be cruel and arrogant, refusing to speak to her. But Akimi boldly confronts him about this in a scene where the true cause of his silence is then revealed. It was an ap apology. For my mother. Akimi's response to this realization is a life changing epiphany in which she realizes the path to freedom for her lies not in running from her situation, but by tackling it head on and establishing her will over it. She decides to connect with her husband. The most brilliant tutor I ever had had a stammer. Lesser teachers laughed. But I knew it was because his mind was so full of thoughts, his mouth simply couldn't keep up. And the intimate bond they forge together results in her finally being able to make her life her own. She frees herself from the devilish attendants who initially tormented her. She supersedes her draconian mother-in-law as head of the household. And she buys the freedom of the women whom she met at the brothel where she temporarily worked. What I love about this dynamic is that Takayoshi's stuttering isn't presented here as a reflection of weakness or fear as we see so often. Takayoshi is a strong character. He is stoic and kind. He is at first controlled by his mother, who instructs him not to speak. But Takayoshi is obeying her out of the filial respect that is demanded of him by his society. As the second son, he has been passed over to succeed as shogun, and yet he doesn't desire to seize power. Also, he is an expert marksman with the bow. A bird that small, caught on the wing. I tell you, you were born to kill. A fact that inadvertently starts him off on bad footing with Akimi, when he shoots a bird without realizing his bride-to-be had just freed it. And he attempts to apologize for this by sending her to new ones. All of these positive traits, and he just happens to stutter. His stutter is the plot device through which we see Akimi able to manifest power over her life. She does this by showing him compassion, understanding, and inviting him to build intimacy. This results in their first act of lovemaking. And once again, we see poetry, and sensuality entwined together, this time with the stuttering. I want to hear you. If only for tonight, let us share this pillow. This is the first time I have ever seen stuttering connected with sexuality. Takayoshi is a character who stutters and yet who is strong, masculine, dutiful, kind, and worthy of sexual desire. It is fitting that the only character who makes fun of his stutter throughout the first season is the psychopathic, bloodthirsty, power-hungry villain. The Shogun th thanks you. D -d 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 does he? <laughs> all in all, Blue Eye Samurai is a highly compelling revenge drama that is entertaining and addictive to watch. It doesn't shy away from mature themes and beautifully presents the world of feudal Japan through a dense web of complex characters. I realize it isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I can't recommend it highly enough, particularly for the way it honors its characters with respect and dignity. And if you're ever fortunate enough to meet someone with a stutter, be the person who doesn't finish their sentences for them. They'll appreciate the extra patience. Thanks for watching.